Alright, so up next, for our next panel, we have a very interesting one. In fact, I think it's quite relevant for a lot of us here. I do see a lot of couples, even you know, young children. So it's for managing your finances as a household. So that's our next panel and it will cover, you know, should couples have shared finances? How much should each person contribute to family expenses? How should I plan for my finances? for kids. So I think these are all very important questions that you should ask yourself, your spouse, your partner. So these are the people that will give us the lowdown, okay? Our panelists, Josh Tan, YouTuber, The Astute Parent, Sarah Chung De Win, creator of Sarah X Miracle and founder of Kaido, Deanna Lim, head of commercial dollars and cents, Jen Ong, head of credit products, GXS Bank, Yes, give it up, come on. And last but not least, John Young, content manager at Sing Saver, who will be moderating the panel. Let's give it up for our panelists. Good morning, everyone. My name is John, and I'm a content manager from Sing Saver. We have a very exciting panel lined up for you today, where we will discuss the importance of managing finances as a household. For those of you in the crowd here who are married or thinking of settling down, I'm sure you all can agree that being aligned financially with your partner is a very important aspect of any relationship. I want you to ask yourself this question. Would you be happy in a relationship if you are constantly being made to spend beyond your means? Realistically, would you be happy in the long run? It could lead to uh, financial conflicts in the future. Here's another example. How many of you in the crowd here think spending $500 on a date is too much? Raise of hands, $500 is too much. If you, ask, if you answer yes, okay, this is exactly the same as investing. Different people have different risk appetites, and some people may actually find spending $500 on a date too much, especially if they earn a much lower income or they are more thrifty. The moral of the story is, Everyone has a different experience when it comes to money. How much one earns, how they spend it, and ways they want to, to divide household expenses. Depending on their financial situation, and upbringing, a couple's financial views may not align at first. Which is why it's important for couples to communicate on these matters early and decide on what best works for them. Only through transparency and understanding can couples align and achieve financial goals together. In order to address this topic today, we have brought together a panel of experts who is bringing their own unique perspective on financial management. Together, we will tackle questions like, should couples have shared finances? How should couples split household bills? And ways, for, ways to plan their finances for their kids. By the end of this panel, we hope everyone here will walk away with some key insights, allowing you to be more accountable for your finances as a couple. Let's kick things off with our first topic. So couples have shared finances. Research actually has shown that couples with joint accounts are happier together, boasting greater relationship satisfaction as they will be working towards a shared goal. Not only does holding a joint account simplify the processes of household payments, but accountability also plays an important factor, as couples will likely make more sensible purchases when their finances are shared. My first question will be for Jen. What is your view on having a joint account with your partner? And maybe you could share some examples of benefits that they would enjoy. Thank you, John. Hi, good to be here. I've been married more than 20 years, so if I look back at how we have been managing household expenses, in my mind, joint account does work. So we started very early in the process. So when we got married, we wanted to make sure that there is a part of money to take care of household expenses. So we think about household expenses, utilities, your groceries and all. So we, when I started, we said that, you know, why not put the percentage of our salary into the pocket? Because it's a bit unfair to say that, you know, we want an absolute amount. Because when we both started, the salary base was different. So we started between 15 to 20 percent contribution to the joint account that we have. So it's like a pocket that we have. And from there, we use that for utilities and groceries. Now, after 20 years, I realized that this joint account actually evolved as it helps with the different life stages that we're in. You know, when you have children, you will start thinking about tuition fees, education, and then when you have extra, then it 
comes in for year end holidays for your family. So to me, joint account makes sense. Um, but if you ask me, I think a bit of independence is also important um, to give you financial uh, freedom. So maybe on the side, you should also have something on your own. That, that is just something that our um, household will be. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Deanna, why are your thoughts on this? Uh, perhaps like you share a different perspective on couples counseling as well. Yeah, interestingly, I think the concept is the same. Um, we, Kevin and I, we do look at it from a joint perspective, but do we really need a joint account? Do we really need to uh, put our pet to a couple? So, so I, I guess at the end of the day, what we do is uh, having our separate accounts, but for different reasons. So having a joint account is a good for couples to probably, I always see that um, the products out there, whether it's single accounts or joint accounts, um, is a way for couples to bring it up and discuss like um, how should we structure our finances together and there are all these things uh, available. And at the end of the day, it's not a comfort level as well. So Tim and I recently um, joined an account is uh, the same, um, just that we have a separate account for different processes like uh, groceries, etc. The stuff will be on my board, and then the long-term um, stuff, like mortgages, is actually what they spend as well. So we don't really need a joint account to do it, but the concept is basically that. Then we need to think about interest rates and stuff as well. Does it make sense to have joint accounts or separate accounts? Um, but at the end of the day, it's a concept. So if um, you are not too sure yet, uh, you can always start with joint accounts and uh, working out as a couple, and I mean, you've been doing it for like 20 years, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it worked for you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so the concept matters more. Actually. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, maybe you can hear from Josh. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Would you be willing, uh, would you actually advise couples these days to actually have joint accounts? Uh, I mean, it's great to be here. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone, for being around. Uh, I'm definitely a big advocate of joint accounts. I've done surveys before and I realize it's also a, a, a common choice by many couples. I think the benefits are, are very clear. You funnel towards the same place, you get more accountability. And at the end of the day, if for example one is better with investing, one is passive, uh, then at least you, you are able to find more funds to invest together. So I think the merits for joint accounts are definitely there. Uh, way more than you know, if you keep everything separate, whereby you still spend some effort to communicate. Uh, even more. So that's my that's my uh, approach to things. Uh, Sarah, uh, so I, I think during our earlier conversation, you actually shared a story about a friend who unfortunately got uh, divorced. Yeah. 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 In, in my personal experience, my mom's sending me down to call me for marriage and said, okay, I must tell you, me and my dad have a joint account. We consider all our assets, all our finances as one. So you get married, you become one, just be one, okay? I mean, my mom just sat me down and said that. Uh, life advice to me, and I was like, okay, yeah, I believe it, and I and I, and I took it on. Um, and personally, for us, even though we do have separate accounts, like for different things as well, uh, sometimes it's like four savings or like you know, for us to save for rainy days. Uh, we do like similar to what um, you know we were saying uh, for Jen. We do have a lot of expenses out of the joint account, um, but I think beyond the joint account, like what Josh was saying about investments is also a very important point because. Things like investing to grow your money or buying an asset, like let's say real estate. Um, all this requires you to have the mentality that, okay, if the real estate, even though yeah, I want to play the 991 game, but end of the day actually we technically own all the properties together, right? It's not as if like just because one is your name, one is my name, one is yours, so it's mine, now, right? Because we actually financed it jointly together. We, we plan to actually do that. So in the long run, I think that mindset you know, is really key. Um, but I wanted to share a, a kind of like a very sad um, example as well, where like, I had a friend who, when they were together, they were always calculating the, the splits. And when they had a son, they were calculating who would pay for his education, versus who would pay for his transport or his swimming. Um, and then when they eventually got divorced, like, it just continued that way. It just continued being so calculated. And you can see that there was so much um, tension and risk that already was there from the beginning because they were constantly calculating who would pay for what for our son. And obviously the son is a joint investment, right? I mean, it was considered as a joint investment, right? So how do you calculate between your children? Oh yeah, I, I contributed 30% to my son, so next time what? He must be able to take more money on my own, is it? I mean, I'm not. I think it's very, I mean, children, we, we can see them as investors, but I mean, the, 
the, the joy they bring to the family is different. Uh, so, uh, we hope it's equal equal respect and uh, equal... And more than investment, more than investment. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, let's actually jump into our next point. Uh, how should couples split household bills and split financial responsibilities? As brought up earlier, it can be a difficult topic to discuss, especially if your incomes are equal or if you have different spending habits. This poses the question, is there actually such thing as a fair system that couples can follow to split household expenses? Uh, maybe Josh, you could share with us, how should couples align on financial responsibilities once they are married? Is there a right way to do this? I, I think right way, inverted commas. We, we can all guess that maybe there's no one size fits all. Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to it. And when I go uh, see cases, when I dig in forums, very funnily, I see 90% of the problems usually come when, when there's a pay jump, for example. Uh, I have this case which is down on my channel, a 245k income couple. So the story is, both of them when they started off, they, they were similar in pay. Which means when you approach expenses, you do it 50-50, that's logical. But then what happens is, the husband got a, a, a pay jump, uh, congrats to him, went to a tech firm. But then I think there's a gap in terms of the income already and maybe the wife was hoping that he, he contributes more and that's where the friction started coming. So I think the moral story is, you know, uh, there's no one size fits all and you really need to evolve the way you, you contribute also. Previously 50-50, in future it could change. Let's be dynamic about it. And I think one point also uh, that I was always thinking on their shoes is they should be a bit more generous, be a bit more open to share how they feel. Hey, you're earning more now, should you contribute now rather than holding that grudge and going to forums to complain and Uncle Josh fix it up and <laughs> I do a case study on it unfortunately. Uh, but also for the guy, I also maybe uh, yeah, take the initiative, open up the topic, uh, prevent, prevent uh, this kind of uh, resentment. Then uh, you know, you sidestep a lot of these problems. So I would think there's no one size fits all is true and uh, the key part is it's dynamic. Fine, keep fine doing it through communication. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Jen, so let's say if a couple, uh, they do not act or they didn't earn the same amount, how would you, would you recommend to actually split household expenses if let's say one party were to earn more than the other? Yeah, so, so this is exactly what happened, right? Not everybody start off with the same thing. That's the reason why in our household we went by percentage, right? If you're earning $3,000, I think you contribute 15%. The husband is earning six thousand. He contributes fifteen percent. Then, then when that goes in, it's a bit fair from a disposable income perspective when you put the money in. And then that's why, to my mind, the joint account covers everything that runs the household, right? So from like I said, from the groceries to your insurance for your children to the endowment plan, and and that is for the household. Then again, if you talk about Life cannot be too calculated, right? So we can't be saying that, okay, it's my turn to buy, I'll bring you to an office and then my husband's turn to buy, maybe I'll go to a restaurant. I mean, it takes two to come together to then decide. So again, I agree with Josh, there's no one size fit all, but it's very important to manage expectations from the onset. And these two people come together in a life. I think if the relationship is strong, there may not be a situation like this where it becomes complicated. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that is the Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, okay, let's move on to our last uh, question for today. Uh, let's discuss ways to actually plan your finances for your kids. Uh, starting a family is obviously a challenging task, especially for first-time parents. And as we all know, raising children in Singapore is a very expensive affair. From hospitalization and doctor fees to daily necessities for kids, uh, it can actually put a very substantial financial strain on the couple. Uh, there's also obviously a need to plan for your education in the future and any extracurricular activities. So what is some advice you actually can offer to uh, couples who are trying for a baby right now? And maybe uh, what are some steps that you need to identify in order to be sure that they are financially ready for a child? Um, let's maybe hear from Sarah. What advice actually would you offer to couples these days? Whatever budget you think you need, I would try to The reason why is that there are a lot of things that happen with your children that you will never expect. So, for example, my two boys got sick last two weeks. I'm also actually a bit slow down with this. I catch the food from them. And uh, bring them to see the pediatrician. Because, you know, if I'm not a GP, they go, well, okay, after one week, go to the pediatrician. The pediatrician visit already costs like 500 bucks. By the way, it's 150 for the first consult, 100 for every subsequent consult. It's only five minutes. 
But then the Pomi Quartz steroid, the uh, analyzer thing, costs $100 for one box. Okay, I'm just giving you an example. So whatever you think you need, you need 30% more. So please, um, contingency plan for the children, that's number one. I think the second thing um, that, that, that I, I did for my older daughter is that I, I definitely started on my environment plan for her when she was quite young. Um, just, even though like, we were very young parents then, because our story is that, you know, I, I, was, I was like a teen mom, we got married very early, and I had very little money when we were young, but I just felt like I knew I wanted to save my daughter's education. And two years ago, I opened an endowment account, and I only put in $2,000 a year. I'm just telling you, honestly, I only put in $2,000 a year ever since she was two years old. It was a 17-year savings plan. She's only 17 this year. Only this year, I'll have been, I would have paid only actually $34,000, which is not a lot of money, by the way. But the announcement is supposed to return me about $60,000. Supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be. So even though at that point I was, you know, I was like really young, man. I'm like 20, I'm 20 years old. But I am fortunate that I, took, I decided to just take that step because I would not have set aside that money. You know, if I didn't just say, okay, you know what, we'll just buy the bullet. Every year we'll put $2,000 into that account, just push it in. Of course, now for my sons, now that I'm in a better earning capacity, uh, we're not doing the same thing, we're not doing the endowment fund thing. Uh, we're setting aside much larger sums and trying to invest that separately because actually you could potentially grow much faster. But if you're not like so aware or disciplined with how to do that yourself, you know, go watch this YouTube channel for more. Um, I, 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 would, I would say start with endowment for, for the beginning um, so that you at least have a base price. Thank you. Uh, so this actually besides investing and saving early, actually what are some key points that couples might miss out? Uh, maybe we can hear from Vienna. Uh, would you watch out uh, insurance? Would you actually recommend for young for parents who are starting out with their family? Yeah, I think coming from my own personal experience, right? Uh, once the baby is out, just go and get an insurance quickly for them. Because um, um, they fall sick easily and the hospitalization fee is no joke. I mean, like, uh, my first kid went to the hospital at six months. And thankfully, you know, we got everything all settled, um, nothing, no complications and stuff, and they recovered. I think with kids, um, we often need to, with health issues and stuff, we also want to make sure that we can cater to them. We can't be like, oh, because of budget issues, and then we can't send them to see a doctor or some treatment that we have. So, I think having enough saving insurance, um, you need to make sure you protect and plan ahead for your family. Lah. So, uh, for child insurance, you should always go, go read up dollars and cents articles. Uh, we've covered a lot about what kind of like needs, that basic needs that you need for your kids. Yeah, I think you're right. So. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I think we are actually, uh, at, uh, that's all the time we have today. But actually, before we conclude our panel, uh, could we just have everyone here uh, share one key piece of advice that actually couples can take away to better manage their finances? No, baby, let's start with Josh. I think. Getting a good sense of uh, your budgets right now is very important. Uh, when a kid comes on board, we've covered a lot of topics that expenses are going to step, step out. You need 30% extra, unforeseen. Uh, we've talked about medical insurance. I don't know if you've seen before the premium tables, you realize that kids 0 to 3 years old is more expensive than someone who's 4 years old. That tells you that medical expenses are ex very expensive for young kids because they, they fall sick, parents bring them to hospitals. So the, the part whereby we underestimate how much cost kids come about uh, it's very real. Uh, you'd see more doctor's visits than, than usual. And uh, if you're a new parent, uh, really tighten up and check in your, on your budgets right now. If you're able to save massive amounts, do that now. Uh, be very urgent in that. Because once, once the kid comes on board, you'll see all the expenses coming in. And uh, like Jen, Jen has been a veteran mom. Uh, she's seen all the costs before from, from uh, delivery all the way to school fees and stuff. So uh, it's a big amount. Don't be afraid, but uh, Definitely start preparing them. Sarah? Yeah, me as a couple, I mean, I mean, you know, sometimes we think, oh my gosh, it's a chore to budget, it's a chore to do all these things. Um, one, I listen to a podcast, I can't remember the name of the guy, and he talks about this thing about setting huge life goals for yourself. And you know, I think you have to make planning finances um, something that works for you. you. Like, you should not be working for the money. The money is the means for you to enjoy life, to enjoy your children, to enjoy your family. So for example, like one of my personal wish life goals is that I want to bring my family someday, maybe next year, not this year, maybe um, on, on, on like a nice US holiday. Okay? Because a like US holiday uh, with three kids, uh, it's like the, the airfare alone, the Airbnb, you know, even stay Airbnb, you know. It is a nice five-figure sum to bring kids on a nice holiday like that. But for us, we are like, you know, just set a 
try a nice goal for ourselves, then we want to create memories for the family, right? So today I don't touch money is for what, right? So that we can create memories together, so that we can grow the family together, give them things that they really enjoy. So I, I encourage you to think about the positive things, and, and, and you know that your budget is being set aside, so that you create those eternal things, you know, not just the temporary, the medical, the other things. Okay. I'll do a quick one. Um, to me, Plan early, it's very important to plan early. I mean, once you have set a little mess for yourself and the family to come, then it's easier to manage, so it doesn't become a chore. Um, children are expensive, but they're also a joy. Um, it's also expectation, how you, what school you want to put them, how you, how you want to raise them. Um, and make sure that you review the financial status with your partner every two years. That's what we do. questions, uh, please feel free to approach them for a chat or post them on the Sydney Community Forum. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the Sydney Personal Finance Festival.